Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays and today it's time for your latest update on how I've been getting on with Dyson Sphere program. Uh, this channel is as ever sponsored by trefoil.be. Go to trefoil.be slash Lawrence Plays and use the code Lawrence Plays on checkout to get 20% off. So what was I doing last week? Well one of the big things I, was, I uh, spent a lot of time bashing my head against was oil processing because up until fairly recently I'd had the uh, oil, refined oil being processed here into, sorry, the crude oil being processed here into refined oil, which is these orange boxes, and hydrogen, which is these ones with, well, what's visibly hydrogen on them. And that was then going off into the base to be turned into things. And initially, I was using massive quantities of hydrogen because that goes into the red science. But I wasn't really using any of the um, any, any of the refined oil, so that was just being collected in some tanks that were in over here, which I've since got rid of. Um, so that built up a, a, a significant stockpile of the of the uh, refined oil. And then when I started needing refined oil to make plastics and sulfuric acid and stuff for making the yellow science over here, and for further tech way on down the bus, um, at that point. I started using what was in the in the, in the tanks and uh, just using that up um, with, 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 without a care in the world. And I've now got to the point where I've used up all of that refined oil, so I've had to rethink things a, a bit. So we now have three sets three sets of refineries here. These ones along here are turning crude oil into refined oil and hydrogen. These ones are turning refined oil into hydrogen, and these ones are turning hydrogen into refined oil. So, in theory, using all of this, I can balance the three of them, to, the three sets of machines together, to keep up a steady flow of both the refined oil and the hydrogen in the correct proportions that are needed for the rest of the base. Now. In theory, if, if, it, if it was hard-coded, if I was always going to be using the same amount of refined oil and the same amount of high hydrogen, um, and not the same as each other, but always the same amount over time, then I could go in here and I could put in exactly the right number of machines to, to, to get the uh, the oil ratios balanced. However, that's not going to be the case. We've got, over, over here, we've got... Um, Things, things will change, so depending on what research I'm doing, I don't think I'm doing any at the moment, I'm not doing any research at the moment, um, but depending on what I'm, what research I'm doing will affect what proportion of the oil and the plastics and the hydrogen and so on are used. And so I need a system that will automatically self-correct for, um, for, for, for any imbalances. So after a lot of head scratching, I've come up with this system and I believe this will work. It hasn't really been properly stress tested, so it's a little bit gut feeling at the moment. But let's let me try and talk through it. I may need a couple of attempt, couple of takes in order to get this right. So we'll see how this goes. So we've got the machines along here producing the refined oil and hydrogen. So they're, 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 these are nice and simple. They take in the crude oil and they spit out hydrogen. They spit out refined oil. We're then taking those out. Each one of those will then flow round to a splitter, like in this case this one. And here we're prioritising the hydrogen going out this way to be then turned into uh, refined oil. And over, and then round here, the refined oil that's made from the original original processing system. This goes in here, and this one sends it out this way by priority to be turned into hydrogen. So the priority is to produce the two fluids and then swap them over. However, if one of them starts to back up, as has happened here, we've got more refined oil than we know what to do with. So the output, the, the outputs, we prioritise the ones that come from the other um, come from that come from the reprocessing. So over here, we've got we're um, we bring, bring out first. We're prioritising the stuff that comes from comes from the hydrogen. So we take so by priority, the refined oil that gets used is the stuff that gets turned into hydrogen and then turned into refined oil and then passed out along here. Um, and then if we run out of that, then we'll use the oil that comes through from the uh, from, from directly from the processing plants here. The same is true with the hydrogen process. Hydrogen, sorry, turning refined oil into hydrogen. Um, the stuff that comes out from the from the processing plant is is prioritised here to go out to be turned into hydrogen. And then the hydrogen will over here. We are then prioritising um, the hydrogen that comes out of these machines over what comes from the original processing. And the theory behind this is that we'll use up. We'll use up what comes out of these machines first, but if that but if it runs out of the hydrogen it's trying to turn into refined oil, then we'll use the refined oil from here, which will cause these machines to make more hydrogen. So it should be so my theory is that it should be self-balancing. I haven't left this running for long enough yet to really be sure about exactly how well it's going to work. So I think we're going to have to leave this running while we carry on with all kinds of other stuff, science and technology and building up things all around the rest of the base, and find out if it works. 
it's, as I say, a bit experimental. Maybe I'll try and put together some sort of equation or diagram or something to, to help with the understanding of it, because I'm not entirely sure I understand it myself, so you guys are probably going to struggle given that I'm the one who's trying to explain it. Um, but in theory, the hope is that this will work and will mean that both the, the, the supplies of both the hydrogen and the um, and the oil, refined oil, will will be um, will, will stay balanced. Now, interestingly, this mining machine is running very, very low on iron, so I might need to uh, replace it fairly soon. Um, or perhaps, <laughs> if it finally manages to eat all of this patch, then I can move forward to get these three. But at the moment, it we're running a bit low on um, on iron ore from from this mine. Now, now there are two other iron mines, so it's not too serious. But that one is going to be a worry in the in the not too distant future. The other notable thing about this that I probably should have mentioned is that when you do the um, the hydrogen, yes, the hydrogen and oil, so turning oil into hydrogen, it releases a certain amount of energetic graphite. And when you do it the other way, it takes in a bit of coal in order to do it. So this process as well is also generating a, a not insignificant quantity of energetic graphite, so, which is also useful because we'll, we'll be using that elsewhere in the system for, um, for making other sciencey stuff and these belts are the wrong way around that shouldn't be linking like that but given the given the quantity that's coming through i don't think it's actually a problem but we should actually be prioritizing this one because this is the one that outputs from here so i should probably switch that round um but not right now so yes that's that's the oil it's it's a bit weird it's a bit funny and ideally i wouldn't do it like this in factorio I would have these feeding into some tanks, and then I'd have the and I'd be monitoring the amount in the tanks and telling one of these, one or the other of these, to run if either of the tanks were starting to run a bit, were starting to get a bit too empty. Um, as it is, we don't have we don't have circuit conditions, at least as far as I'm aware, so I can't do that. So I'm having to would do weird balancing things through other methods, and it's, it's a bit strange, but I think it should work. And in a way, it's sort of nice because it's 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 a different challenge. That's my theory, anyway. So what else have I been doing? Been doing? Well, in the last in the last uh, video, I talked about how I got the, um, the these these power tower these um, no logistics towers like that one over there up and running. So we've got these towers put up on my two the two planets I've I've got outposts on so far, and I've got these little spaceship things flying back and forth between them carrying resources around. So that's great. That's bringing in this supply of um, titanium that I'm using for making these titanium blocks and for various other things. It's also bringing in the silicon that's being used in massive quantities uh, somewhere around here. This is glass. Somewhere o over here to make these processors that are then also being used to make quite a lot of the things that I'm trying to make. So, in or the, however, the new thing that I've done this in the last stream is these automated systems here, where we're producing significant quantities of what are these things called? These are um, photon combiners, uh, which are made from prisms, and also these. Um, super magnetic rings that are um, and we're using these to make large quantities of the um, these ray receivers what they got yeah they are actually called ray receivers and the um, and the EM rail ejectors and so this is the is the start of my uh, of my Dyson swarm <clears throat> and the Dyson swarm is you can't see it from here. I, I saw it briefly earlier, but now it's, it's the wrong time of day. So I'll look at it in a moment because it's prettier seeing it from from uh, ground level than it is from higher from from up in the air uh, from uh, up in space. So yes, we're using these to produce the um, the photon combiners, and also over here we've got some extra machines in that are producing the um, the graphi graphite sheets. What are, what are they actually called? Um, graphene. Okay, uh, producing quite a lot of those, and those are both being fed over here and into this um, tap into this tower over here, where we're building up a supply of, of the graphene and the photon combiners in here that are then being picked up by the spaceships, and these are being taken off to the other planet. So I had originally, in the last video, you'll have seen that I had a, um, a railgun over here launching the solar sails I was making. But it's got to the point where um, that's less useful now. Or, or rather, no, it's got to the point where I got a bit, a little bit fed up of doing that from this planet. Because quite a lot of the time, there's this massive gas giant that gets in the way of doing that. Which I can't actually see at the moment. Oh, there, there is the gas giant, yes. So that massive gas giant gets in the way, so I can't launch them. Uh, and so instead, I've been launching them from the other planet, which is a much more stable one. And I'll go out there and run through my thought process on that in, in a minute. But that has enabled me to get these two, you can see them up here. I've now got two Dyson Swarms running. There's the older one, which is the orange one up here. And the newer one, which is firing out the blue uh, ones here. And over time, they will gradually decay. If I look at the uh, Dyson Sphere information here. So you've got down here, these are the old ones from the old 
uh, ring, the, the low level uh, spikes. And then, and, and in fact, you can see them all the way around here, around the sun. And then you've got this big spike here from when I started shooting them out a lot more quickly. So instead, instead of shooting them out at like 30 per whatever time period these cover, I've been shooting them out at 160, 170 per time period. Uh, and that means that's that's how I've managed to get this much much larger uh, Dyson swarm going on here. And we're now generating, in theory, 160 megawatts, uh, which is actually 100% satisfaction for all of the um, the dishes that are collecting power. That's amazing. I've not seen that be actually fully satisfied before. When I was playing before, it was nowhere near. But now it looks like we've got like 120% of the amount of power we need. That's amazing. Now part of that is going to be because these ones have gone offline. So um, it's now it's now uh, night time over here. They're not. We can't see the sun. So these ray receivers aren't receiving any power. Power. However, if I look around on the other side of the planet, I've got a long set of pylons running out all the way out here, <laughs> across the uh, across the uh, swamps and the seas, to these receivers over on the other side of the planet, which are pulling in about two megawatts each. Now, in theory, these things are capable of pulling in six point four megawatts apparently. And now there, there are various things that will tweak that, like uh, setting up how. Um, how efficient your your uh, they they are beaming through the atmosphere. You can set it how many of the um the, the, how many solar cells you have in the Dyson swarm and so on. But at the moment these are presumably only producing uh, to 2.2 kilo uh, megawatts because I'm not using all of the power that we need on this planet. So if we look at power. Yes, you can see we've got a generation capacity of 62 megawatts, and we're currently using 20 megawatts. So I've got far more power available than they need. But if I start doing some science, let's try and find one that uses lots of everything. Uh, yeah. Yeah, right. Let's let's run, start that one running. Now the amount, now everything, all all of these machines will in a moment or two. They will all start to kick in. We'll start to produce some more. The basically all everything that's producing the science will start to kick in, and that will massively boost the amount of power we're using. But yeah, so I put essentially put these three and the other three on opposite sides of the planet, so that either these will be in the it be be will be able to see the um see the Dyson swarms, or the other one will be, ones will be able to. So one way or the other, we're going to get enough power through to uh, to keep everything running. Now, the reason I'm f passing um, the photon combiners and the graphene over here separately is because I'm apparently unobservant. So if we look in here, we can see we've got, we've got those being loaded in, we're sending them off, and then we're building, at the other end, we're, we're building them into the solar sails, the recipe, it, because as you see, the, the, the recipe makes, you put those in, it makes one, makes a couple of those. However, it, it turns out you actually can send solar sails by, uh, by these uh, logistic systems as well. Somehow I just managed to miss it when I was looking in here, trying to find the damn things. I completely missed it, I don't know how, um, but... Yeah, somehow, somehow I did. So I didn't actually, manage, I didn't actually load them in to, 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 to transport like this. So at the other end, I'm building them. However, if we look at the recipe, it doesn't actually matter because it takes one of each in order to make two solar cells. So you're transporting the same amount of stuff either way. It just means I needed a couple of extra assembly machines at the other end. So, oops, but <laughs> never mind. I've been doing bits and pieces of research into the. Um, into the uh, solar stuff as well on the upgrade side so we can we can down here we can upgrade how long the solar sails themselves last for so let's start that one running as well um, and this each one of these will give me an extra 300 300 seconds 300 seconds 600 seconds before they just disintegrate out in space and stop working so that means they'll they'll sit out there they'll last for longer so I'll be able to get more power out of them and then down here we've got the ray transmission efficiency which boosts how much energy actually makes it through the atmosphere from the Dyson swarm to the um, to, 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 to the uh, to the beam receivers and so those that that's effective this is this is extending how long the things will last for this is improving the efficiency of them essentially because as, as we saw when we when we looked at uh, the, my Dyson sphere I'm, I've got a generation of 169 megawatts um, and 120 megawatts being requested uh, but I'm, but I've only got well, there's going to be some sort of um, efficiency problem in there, and I th I don't think that's why these are only saying three and a half megawatts. Only you'll notice that's gone up now to start using a bit more power because I've kicked the science in. No, I believe that the these are still capable of six megawatts no matter what the efficiency is. It'll just take generating a lot more power from the Dyson swarm, which I still can't see, um, uh, in order to actually in order it, it, a lot more a lot more solar sails to generate the six or so megawatts that we we, we need from these. You can also improve the effectiveness of these by by loading them up with a, um, a graviton lens, and that will give me a boost. But it's a piece of research that I haven't haven't done yet. I haven't got the uh, the tech or anything like that in order to do it. So yes, if this will allow me to get more power, um, much much 
see, hopefully more easily than the, uh, than, the, than the windmills. The windmills produce um, 300 kilowatts. These can produce, in theory, 6 megawatts. It's not as much as I was hoping for from these, but given that I can spam quite a few of them in e relatively easily, and um, yeah, I think this is probably going to be alright. So I think that covers basically everything I've done on this planet. I've extended, as, as I said, I've, I've extended the production here of all the ingredients for solar cells. I've started making the rail guns to launch them. I've put in, um, I've extended the, uh, the, the the cable, uh, the pylon network to go all the way around to the other side of the planet so I can have two sets of, uh, of solar receivers and have them in opposite sides of the planet to get power in from both directions. And, um, and I've faffed around with oil and making more graphene as well. So those have been those have been the main pushes of this of this uh, of this build. I shall now fly over to the um, other planet, which is going to take me a, a minute or two. So I'll um, I'll just recharge and I'll fly over, and we can rejoin each other when, once I get there. Right, I'm on my way over, but I thought I'd show off the um, the the, uh, the Dyson swarms on my way past, just because they they actually they do look quite pretty from space as well. So uh, yes, there they are. As I said, the orange one is the old one that I was put that I was launching from the uh, from the first planet, but the, a lot of the solar sails are still up there and still generating power. The blue one I, I switched over for no real reason, just because I thought it'd be fun to have a second orbit of them. Um, so that one's over there, and that that also is generating significantly more power because there's a lot more of them. There's a leaf for three. It's quite a long way, so I'll uh, we can carry on talking when I get there. What's also quite cool is you can see the satellite, the the, the solar sails being launched. That's those little blue things hanging in space, flying outwards past me. Um, I don't know whether you'll be able to see them through the YouTube compression, but trust me, there are little blue flecks flying out into the um, into the unknown to be to become part of the Dyson swarm. So over here on Alifa 3, I have the um, the other end of the logistics system, the uh, another tower station here. This one is requesting the uh, photon combiners and requesting the graphene, and it, as before, it's providing the titanium and the, and the uh, silicon. Now it looks like we're, this silicon one isn't isn't f completely full, so I might need to increase the uh, the amount of production here a little bit. And it also looks like I need to significantly increase the pro photon combiner production because we're getting those are we're running a bit low on them basically. Over here, those are being fed out from the uh, from the tower. They're going onto a, a pair of belts here, as you can see, past the um, past these machines, which are turning them into the, into the actual solar cells sails, and then the solar sails are being shoved out onto the um, onto the belt here and taken carried along it by the well, by the belt. Running over here, you can see the belt then takes a, a nice 90 degree turn and then trundles away round the round and over the horizon. So what I've done here. Is I've arranged about I think it's 12 of these guns because that seemed like a seemed like a reasonable number uh, all the way around. So they're every 30 degrees around the planet. So if I zoom out to map mode, you can see there's sort of it's almost like a um, <laughs> like a hairline going all the way around the around the uh, the top of the planet. That's actually 45 degrees up, so it's halfway between the equator and the pole. And I decided on this because my original plan was to put all the guns up here on the pole, which is why there's a um, a rogue power. Uh, pa the, pylon up here that I, I didn't tidy up. So the theory was, if I cluster a load of them around the pole and then a load more around the other pole, they'll be able to fire all the time because this planet has almost no tilt. If we go out to the um, this view, we can see that uh, we have here, we have a planet's obliquity of about, well, about four and a half degrees. Okay. So it's a bit, of, there is a bit of tilt on it, but I was thinking that might be enough that the planets, that the, uh, the guns would always be able to fire because they'd be able to depress far enough. Unfortunately, putting them on the pole means they can never fire because the, uh, they'd always have to try and, because they can't depress all the way down to, to horizontal. They have to be somewhere between about 60 degrees and 80 degrees or something like that. I don't know. Those numbers are a little bit off the top of my head. So that also means that if you put them on the equator, then that's also not going to be great because they won't be able to fire when the um, the Dyson Swarm is directly overhead. So my theory was, if I put them on about 45 degrees as I as I have, then they'll be able to fire constantly at least when they've got any um, solar sails to launch, which we, we don't seem to be producing them fast enough. But that's a that's a, a, a different factor really. So yeah, here we go. As they come around here, this this gun is now able to basically fire all the time until 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 night until night falls which it's it's about to around here so eventually this one will drop down to the point where it can't quite see so here we go 40 this will get down to the point where it's probably about 10 degrees where it can't shoot any, anymore we'll see as it gets there because this is going to be mildly interesting there we go 5 degrees and it can no longer start, it can no longer shoot outwards so there's that's 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 the limit on these things but this does mean so this means in theory as long as i've got 
go away. As long as I've got enough guns round and enough enough ammunition being fed round, which I apparently haven't, then the guns round the other side of the planet will kick in uh, at their at their dawn. Where am I looking? Dawn. So no, this is still dusk. I've scrolled the wrong way. Let's let's try and not. Um. Yeah, so there we go. There's the guns on the other side of the planet. So the guns down around here that, are, that are now have ammunition and where it is where it is still sort of... Is this dawn or dusk? I'm, I'm not sure. Um, and I can't see I can't see this gun because it's too far away. But anyway, these, these guns will still carry on firing and will hopefully be able to keep firing all day. As I say, as long as the ammunition is, is it keeps being supplied to them. Now, the um, so the limiting factor here is how quickly we can actually produce the solar sails. So I need a lot more of these machines making them, and I need a better supply of stuff coming in. But that's just logistics problems. That's something I can deal with. The, the basic theory is working nicely, as you can see by the fact that I've got this massive Dyson swarm going on here that's producing 175, 176 megawatts. So this is going really well. We're producing loads and loads of power here. Um, it just needs a little bit of expansion. And as I said, by the looks of this, it also needs a little bit of expansion on the uh, on the silicon production as well. So that's what I got up to in the last in the last stream. Um, it's probably it's, there's not been as much stuff to talk about as as other times because there's been quite I spent quite a lot of time actually building things up, putting all of these down in about the right places took quite a long time. Just running the belts around, running the pylons around, running the uh, putting down the um, uh, these the, the, the these things um, are those actually linked? Looks like it. Okay. Um, I mean, they don't look like I don't see a, anything between them, but they seem to. Everything seems to be working, so I, I, I can't. I, I, I'm not going to complain about it. Um, yeah, so putting all of the pylons down, all the belts down, all the guns, all the all the all the ray receivers, that took quite a bit of effort. But it does mean that now I've got massive, massive generation capacity here. The energy consumption isn't too bad. And if I zoom out a bit, we see I don't know what happened there, but this is probably when the guns were firing flat out and we had a bit of a shortage of power. But since then we've now got an ex absolute excess of everything. So this is going really, really well. I've got everything's built up well. I can carry I can just now carry on carry on playing and start worrying about the next stage. And this system here of bringing bringing in all the parts, building the solar sails, and then launching the solar sails is going to be able, is going to keep my uh, power production certainly ticking over at the same level forever. And with the other, with the other researches like like the solar cell life and the ray transmission efficiency, with, with doing those as well, that's going to improve the speed that everything happens at. Uh, sorry, the amount of power that we generate over time because the solar cells will last for longer and we'll get more power through. So. Yeah, things things should just should only get better as we do more research. Now, of course, on the flip side, I'll start using more power, but that's okay. When we get to that point, we build up more of these machines to make the solar sails. Maybe we put in another ring of guns. Maybe we have more guns firing them out from another planet. Who who knows? It, it kind of doesn't matter. But I think we might as well keep them all going up from the same planet because then we can use the same set of infrastructure. And I reckon there's no reason why I couldn't put in another ring of these round here, or maybe just increase the number on this ring and just put double the number of guns we have around here with it and that should be fairly easy to do and it'll obviously double the double the throughput of the system so yes this is um going things are going well i'm uh, looking forward to the next episode although i have to admit i'm not quite sure what i'm going to be doing in the next one possibly looking into a new type of uh, into a new type of science because that's the usual thing you do in these sort of games when you're when you're not sure what to do next you work towards green science or you work towards there's another one up here somewhere um purple science i think purple science might be first actually so yeah we'll carry on working with those things eventually we'll get on to having um uh, actual dyson spheres as opposed to dyson swarms and we'll just work along towards it and just keep going and there's um there's lots of lots to do in here i as i say i don't know the game well enough to say what the next thing i'm going to be doing is going to be so i shall explore and we'll see so thank you very much for watching i hope you'll come along for the stream on wednesday to see what i actually get up to and come along to the stream on monday as well the mon monday evening stream will be uh, factorio with space exploration and crastorio 2 uh the, the multiplayer stream where we're um things are going things are going well at the moment we've uh, launched our first satellite rockets uh we've had some power issues and we're now sort of we're thinking about stone problems at the moment, but there'll be plenty more to come, and eventually we'll start trying to go to space and actually doing doing the space exploration part of space exploration. So yeah, that'll be that'll be fun. Uh, catch up videos at the weekend, you know that because you're watching one right now. Um, but there'll also have been a couple of Factorio ones over the last two days because I've had to split them in half because they're getting so big. I'm talking about so much stuff in them. <laughs> um, and yeah, so that but then that's the that's the main content of the channel at the moment. But I will be making more videos as and when I have time. 
So, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to check out the stream sponsor. That's trefoil.be slash lawrenceplays. Use the code lawrenceplays on, on checkout to get 20% off your first order. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.